I'm Anthony Aykroyd. Welcome to Political Bent. When it comes to the political scene, there's one person who for years has had more influence on politics all over the world than any other. That person is God. You may know God from such religions as Judaism, Islam and Christianity, from Grammy Award acceptance speeches and as the last letter in an annoyingly overused texting acronym. God has stood for candidacy as supreme being under many names, including Yahweh, Allah, Vishnu, Shangdi, Basuto, Ram, Jehovah, Baha, Zeus, Thor, the bloke upstairs, Eric Clapton, all-pervading ultimate reality, and Maradona's hand. God can sometimes present as a really snappy dresser, a radiant and beautiful being who could beat you at chess, make an espresso, and play the bagpipes simultaneously. And sometimes God appears in more visually challenging forms. Most politicians like to have God actively involved in their campaigns. If you're a Democrat and want to become the American president, you have to tell people that you believe in God. If you're a Republican, you have to tell people you believe in God and that you believe God created the world from scratch just 10,000 years ago, despite evidence to the contrary, such as prehistoric fossils and the carbon dating of John McCain. Many conservative politicians, including Sarah Palin, support a theory called intelligent design. Uh, this theory states that life forms are so sophisticated that they couldn't just be the result of evolutionary forces, such as random mutation and natural selection, but must have been designed by... <clears throat> you know who. Of course, there is evidence that seems to disprove intelligent design, uh, such as... And, uh... <clears throat> in Australia, we have a leader of the opposition who is a Catholic. Catholics are a faction of Christianity and have a boss called the Pope, who they believe represents God on Earth and is therefore infallible. The Pope has never tested his infallibility by appearing on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire because he is in fact a billionaire whose organisation controls global assets like property, gold, and a huge range of silly hats. In the Gospel, God's son Jesus said, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. But the Pope is putting his money on the camel making it, and like Tony Abbott, would rather not have his tax strategies put under too much scrutiny, especially by people who follow the teachings found in the Gospels. Our Prime Minister is an unusual case because she is a self-confessed atheist, which means she doesn't even believe God is real. This position requires a lot of focus because every time she says she is an atheist, she has to remember to also say, but I have total respect for the beliefs of those who have faith in the existence of God. And remember not to say, I have nothing but disdain for the primitive superstitions of the deluded worshippers of the flying spaghetti monster. Some people aren't happy just being the representative of God, they like to actually be God. Most of these people are declared insane, but some can have enormous influence in the political world. For example, the recently dead Indian guru Sai Baba, who was worshipped by millions of devotees as a divinity. Sai Baba said he was bitten by a scorpion as a teenager, but instead of becoming an arachnid superhero in a cool costume like Peter Parker, he became the god Shiva and the god Shakti. Oh, and Jesus Christ. <laughs> Talk about your triple threat. Indian politicians needed to keep the Guru's millions of followers on side, so they never investigated the numerous claims of sexual abuse made against him. They were also charmed by Sai Baba's miracles that involved materialising objects out of thin air, including a watch for the Indian Prime Minister that was later shown to be a fake. <laughs> sort of funny the PM didn't pick that up. Listen, there's no doubting God's popularity as a political force, but God does seem to have one major handicap, the inability to stay on message. 
If you read any of God's bestsellers, you'll find a lot of talk about kindness and compassion. But you'll also find God making somewhat violent suggestions, such as taketh and dasheth thy children against the stones. And let's face it, statements such as if a wife seizes her husband's genitals, cut off her hand, well, they're a spin doctor's nightmare. But undoubtedly, most Pollies continue to want God in their corner. We don't know yet if a crucifixion in the polls or a possible Rudd resurrection will be enough to inspire Julia Gillard to a political deathbed conversion. But in politics, as with God, all things are possible. I'm Anthony Aykroyd. See you next week for more Political Bent.